Hello everyone, Mr. Storkin here. Welcome back to Mortal Kombat 10. Today we're taking a to continue our look at the classic towers. Today we're continuing on with the um, with the new recruits with Takeda, um, not Takeda, Kanjin. That's Takeda, that is Kanjin. I do apologize for mixing them up. But be sure to like and subscribe if you guys like Kanjin. I'm not the biggest fan of him. I'm going with Shaolin gameplay because that's the fastest I can play him as. So yeah. Oh cool, we're going up against Johnny first. Again, if you pl could please, please be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Because it does help me know that you enjoy this stuff. <laughs> In other words, yeah, you do, apparently. Gonna test you, Jin. Gonna get me an A++. Or be flat on your ASS. Okay, that was a good line. That means that we're not having the classic line against um, dear old um, Al. Alien earlier. So this is um, Ken Jin. He is the new group meant to basically be the um, new Liu Kang and Liu Kun Lao. It's um, actually related to Kun Lao. Um, you can tell because their first names. And, um, I don't know how naming works in the Mortal Kombat world, but okay. And he's a bit of an archer, so basically Green Arrow. Um, I don't hate playing this one. He's definitely a learning curve character. You can throw fire with his bow, so he has that going for it. But I go with the Shaolin path. Um, now, those who don't know, he has an interesting. Um, not, I don't know if he wants an interesting origin or not. But he was a thief, and a lot of his uh, growth is about trying to um, seek redemption. Seek redemption not only him, but others. And so that's really crucial to his role as we go straight into hitting his head with the dragon bow, which is really cool. In all honesty, as a design bow, it's pretty awesome. I wouldn't mind having a replica of that or just like having them in my office as a pen. You know, like they have like, like the Loki Scepter and the um, 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 Celestial where you can just write down with those cool staff pens. I wouldn't mind that. That's a cool bow. It looks better as a staff than anything else, but okay. <laughs> it looks like. Um, uh, uh, I was going to say Latin, but that's not right. It's Jafar, where he's like, you will obey me, Sultan. You know, stuff like that. But let's take on Cassie, because, yeah, that's what we have to do now. What do you say, Jin? This is going one round. Don't book that Vegas flight yet. Round one. So for those who don't know, actually, Jin was a very crucial character, apparently, in round because uh, he was their first um, open gay character. It's really insinuated in the dialogue in his chapter where he's like, where he's talking to Rain and he's like, hey, I don't know if they'll accept me. And Rain's like, they'll accept anyone as long as you're willing to learn. And I believe they kept it extremely vague. Like, if you're not listening for it, you probably won't interpret it as that him, of that being, of him as saying he's gay. I had to look it up because I'm just like, is that insinuating that he is gay in the context of things. So you dare shoot me, um, Cassie, because I'm not throw it away at you. Which is my plan down the line. I know that can get me a brutality. For Don't do that. I'm just going to smash it like so with my epic dragon arrow, which again is pretty awesome for an arrow design. Um, again, if I had a light in this gameplay to any other um, realm characters, it would totally be Green Arrow from Injustice. Which isn't a horrible comparison. Uh, Green Arrow wasn't that horrible. Ow. Okay, let me throw the woman at you. There we go, as we just blow you off with the woman. You're glad you were born? <laughs> that's just so off-putting to me that that's the thing that will destroy the characters, is just tossing all the women at them and go, Plow! But we're going against Leatherface. Leatherface would be a great one to take out with that. Because it would be very ironic, because Leatherface is known for killing women. But we'll save Leatherface down the line. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Life, you know, things happen. Mm -hmm. This won't be a challenge. Round one. Oh, don't say that. Leatherface is rather tough, and I really hate going up against him, especially when he's trying to stop buildings. Again, it's just so odd to me that. Another realm out of this character. I, they had a bunch of horror characters, which I guess works out. I thought Freddy Krueger was a bit of a stretch when I read that they did Freddy in um, MK9. But at the same time, it's kind of like, cool, they did Freddy there. I'm going to wait to do that. <laughs> it felt nice. Let's destroy him. Please. Ah, thank you. You screwed up. Woohoo! That was great if you're me. 
That was a weird line to say, but it worked nonetheless. So let's take you on, Leatherface, a pretty lady walking down the street, pretty woman. That is an awesome move. I'm not gonna lie. I should say that song about uh, when we do Leatherface in all honesty, because it's just pretty woman. Okay, that did not work out as well. Haha, <laughs> take that. I didn't know sneeze coming. Sorry about that. Whenever I like sneeze at the wrong time, um, you can normally tell, like right before I'm gonna say, I'm gonna sneeze, I sneeze. So I apologize to anyone who's like looking at the video being like, oh my gosh, what's going on? It's like, huh, I sneezed. And you're like, cool, he sneezed. As we take on a reptile, reptile. I always call him a reptile, but it's because I think of the um, Marvel Comics character every time I see it. I am weird like that, and uh, let that be known, but nice vomit there, rept reptile. It's pretty cool. Vile human. We can't all be as handsome as you. Make your peace, fool. Round one. Delicious meat. We got some meat. I don't know why I did that when he was doing that move. I felt kind of stupid. He entered flash time. Yeah, Ozzy has the flash ability there. Um, but Ed Boon did say that um, um, his favorite uh DC character is the Flash. So I guess it makes sense that he would embody some of it. Which, oh, her concern. I I don't know what Ed Boon thought of the horrible Flash movie. Um, yeah, one of those people that hate the Flash movie. I thought it was okay. Um, this year in movies has just ultimately been disappointing, I think. Um, with that being said, I saw some great movies this year. Sorry, because the year is coming to an end. And I'm just thinking, like, is there any other movie I, like, have to see in theaters aside from Haunting the Venice for work? And the answer is not really, because they just announced, like, del a couple of weeks ago, actually, that Doom is delayed. Um... I was just kind of like, no, really? I have to delay my Dune review even more? Yeah, I reviewed the first Dune, and now I have to do, and I want to do um, part one and part two together. But since it got delayed because of the writer strike, um, which is important, I know, but it's one of those things where it's like, I want more entertainment, and I really hope the writer strike doesn't kill some shows, but you'll never know until the writer strike is done or what happens. I, I grew, I grew fond of this show called So Help Me Todd, which um, you saw my review of. Um, I like that show, <laughs> and because of the writer's strike, we may actually lose that show. That's one of the shows I'm actively worried about losing in the writer's strike. But we're not going to lose The Simpsons, because how The Simpsons work is they write their episodes like so far in advance, and it just feels like a weird tangent to be talking about. But I've been to like Simpsons panels where they talk about episodes that aren't like I knew about the Lizzo episode before even air because they presented it at a panel, and yeah. Ready to throw down? Round one. Um, Fight. yeah, because your arrow is gonna work well against the alien. Because why not? Oh, so I found out Pre Predator's playing on um, HBO at the moment of this recording, um, which is fine by me. So it makes it so I can ow. It makes it so I can ow. No, it makes it so I can um, watch it. I really do want to watch it because I am generally curious. I don't know how I'll be able to ever do that move again. Uh, so yeah, I'm starting to kind of like him now that I'm able to play him in a better move style, but he's not going to be one of them. I, I'm very doubtful. I know you're going to say like, well, you're going to say that, but then like at the end of you're like, I want to main him. I'm, I'm really not going to want to main Kunjin. It's not because of his sexuality, which I think is handled, again, really ambiguously. As a character, it's because I don't really like playing as him. Um, this is gonna sound really odd. <laughs> I'm, I'm a quick tangent, by the way, because I, I, I know it mentioned how he was like Green Arrow. Um, I recently saw the Ruby trailer for uh, Mr. League X Ruby. I saw part one, thought it was okay. Um, I want to rewatch it before I watch part two. So my plan is like when part two comes out, just double featuring it. Um, I just want to destroy the alien, so yeah, I still love that attention to detail on the skull. This feels a bit excessive because he's already dead. But okay, it's a male version, isn't it? Because only because the female is the one with the weird head that does the spawning of the face huggers. I could be a thousand percent wrong. I'd have to email my friend about who's like the resident alien expert, but he's having a kid. He has two. <laughs> <laughs> on the long list of people I expect to have kids, he is 
on that list. <laughs> I don't know where I was going that, but let's go against The Predator. Again, this is a movie I really want to watch on HBO Max. Look what the cat barfed up. But I know you're going to say, like, oh, but I mean, as soon as you say you're going to watch it on these channels, you don't end up watching it for a while. And you're like, yeah, you're right. I have a problem, too, with writing down movies. Like, so I have this Word document, and I keep track of what movies I um, have reviews of and what I need to work on. And I write some stuff in advance, and I'm like, okay, I can get that done by this day. And then I never get to it. I have stuff on there that's, like, a couple weeks old that I, like, promised myself I would watch and write a review of. And I just... I just see it on there whenever I return to the side, like, oh yeah, I didn't end up watching that this week. I wanted to, but I just didn't. So I think, like, right after my next... I want to do it before we do the Predator episode, um, where I just want to be like, hey... Ow, that ain't good. But I think I'll watch it closer to the Halloween, because I ultimately watch a ton of Halloween movies around October just because it helps me get into the spooky and holiday vibe of Halloween. I love watching movies on Halloween exactly. Honestly, I'm gonna try and make it this year. My family, um, my family has kind of gotten to the point where they don't really get trick or treaters anymore. I thought we were gonna like decapitate his arm there, but only if we threw the guy on the stick. Um, but we've gotten to the point where we don't really wins. celebrate Halloween. My sister's too old to go to her, oh, she's starting to get too old, but she's going to more parties on Halloween. And we kind of just leave our lights off, and we get pizza, which is a great tradition. Then we watch, like, a Halloween movie. Last year, it was Tom Cruise's Mummy and The Adams Family. Perfect double feature, in my opinion. We should do, I think this year, we need to do The Batman. It would be a nice addition to that. We're trying to spice it up each year, I think. Come, Jin. Hello, Tanya. I'll beat a warmer greeting out of you. Round one. Okay, <laughs> if you say so. Um, let's just punch and punch and punch. Uh, so yeah. Oh, Dragon Nagita. Okay, I don't know what that is, but this isn't the stage with the old woman, right? No, because there's no play tat in the level. That's how I know what stages are, because I know if there's a play tat. Oh, don't do that, Tony. I only know if there's a play tat in the level, then I'll know if I can throw an old woman at something, which is a very very odd rule of things, but it's just how I work. I wonder if the shield will do the same thing. Um, I'm looking forward to cover the DLC characters online. We definitely have to cover Goro like, right after uh, Sinar, because Goro is the first DLC character. Because if you pre-order, you got Goro. I don't know how to feel about that um, with the pre-order fighters. Um, because then if you get it later, you kind of have to pay extra for them, which I get is the intent of the studio is to make some more money. I'm actually not going to use my super because I want to see if the shield does the job of the brutality. It did not. Okay. Maybe it was just not enough damage. I don't know though. It's very unlikely. Oh, that thing was used to bring down the statue of Shao Kahn. Never knew that. I really didn't. So that giant rhinoceros pig was used to destroy that. It, that's good. That's good to know. As we take out Kun Lao. Okay, it's going to be Kun Lao, and then Goro, and then Shang. This should be interesting um, to see their interaction between each other, because Kun Lao and Lu um, Kun Jin are related. You provoke me? Just want to test myself against you. You are not ready. Round one. Yeah, they are relative, in case you didn't really know that. I don't blame you for not knowing that. Because, again, they have the same person. I'm not falling for that. Ow. I have mixed feelings about um, Hun Lao as a playable character because he can be really annoying if you know how to use him, but uh, I don't know how to use him, so I can't really get the best out of him. I'm generally curious to see what they're going to do with um, MK1. Again, I have, I'm trying to avoid spoilers with that one, trying to go in with a fresh set of eyes. But yeah, you never know until after you watch the story cutscenes. I think that really shapes a game, in my opinion, because then I'm like, I know story beats. Um, which ultimately hurts. But yeah, life, you know, um, things they be happening. I need to start playing the end of this year, which is going to be uh, interesting because I've been having many computer problems. But, you know, life finds a way. Ow, I failed that. Um, 
but I do have several games planned next year. Um, I'm going to make that announcement, like, what's going to happen next year in terms of content, um, which should be interesting. Duh! I'm not going to fall for that again. Oh. Take that. I think that worked. Duh! Ow. It's like, I'm not going to fall for your trick. It's like, I did not fall for the trick, but I like that. I didn't know we were, like, finally allowed to do finish him, but okay. You do you. <laughs> I don't know where I was going that sentence at all. It's just like, you do you. Wins. So, yeah, sorry. I belched there in case you didn't hear the overly loud belch. I, I had pizza for lunch at the time of this recording. And I got to do because I got it at Little Caesars. And um, I don't hate Little Caesars. Little Caesars just has horrible customer service. But it's pretty good pizza, all things considered. So, yeah, let's check on Goro. So, on Goro. Kunjin. That's me, loincloth. There is no honor in you. Round hey, how would you say that? You're dead. <laughs> Somehow, I think, um, Chun Jin is winning in the game of life, considering he is still alive in the canon. Um, before the reboot. But you died, Goro. That's basically the, um, your wiki page. Like, you're destined to die. Well, I guess come how it is also that you die. It's also like in the Mortal Kombat rules. But yeah, you died. So again, Kung Jin is beating you in the game of life. Um, I hate the game of life. Um, the board game it is still the worst game ever. Um, Round two, fight. The reason I hate it is because it's basically the Candyland rules of there isn't really a strategy to it. You just roll the dice and you move. Um, games like Sorry and so much more are so much more interesting um, war games because... Ooh, don't say anything, enemies. Don't say anything. Don't say anything and you got it. Haha. -ha. I was going to say, don't say anything or else you'll risk that flawless victory, which you got. Kung Jin wins. wins. Flawless victory. See? I knew it. I was like, MH, don't say anything as you complained about Sorry. But some of the arguments like you can split up the points, like you split up the moves, which I like. It's a good strategy. Life is just I don't know what the point of life is. <laughs> because you just spin the thing and then you move across and then you get a card to add more kids. What's the point of the game? To what do I owe this intrusion? The fact that you're evil? Very well, hero. Round I like how he just accepts that he's a villain. He's like, yeah, whatever. It's not like the guy from Dissidia who's like, I have to be the role of villain. Um, you block the actual. All he's missing is a mustache. Like, I would love if Shinnok had an evil villain twirling mustache. Because that would, in my opinion, complete his complete and utter villainous design. Like, he already looks like the devil. You just need to make him look even more like the devil. Like, if Beelzebub from Futurama looks like the robot devil. This guy looks like the living devil, and he needs a mustache. It's the only way to complete it, in my opinion. I I just think you need it. Ow! I was gonna say I was really close to that flawless victory because I got a lot of damage off of the guy, but no. Take that and that and that. I'm doing actually pretty well, Kanji. I'm not gonna complain about that. I'm doing better than him than I was doing with some other characters like uh, Johnny. But ultimately. Oh, that's how you do the arrows. Good to know. Um, I cannot do it again as much as I tried, but it worked nonetheless. And actually, for a character, we've been making the most progress I can do. And this is the fastest so far that I've seen. I'm just looking at the time being like, oh, okay, we're only in. It makes sense. Mm, you don't. Anyway, <laughs> please tell me in the comment section below like what the purpose of the board game life is. Um... I generally want to know because uh, it's a game that I am not good at whatsoever. Uh, hello, Crouch. I'm not going to just punch you and hit you down. If you do the fucking fire belly move, I swear to goodness, I will throw the blood of holy water at you. Again, Rain, don't know what your plan is with having a container of blood, but okay, you do you. Ow. Ow. Um, I, I should thank you for that because then I can finally do that and crack your little demon neck and shoot you in the eye because I guess, yeah. Um, hello, intestines. Um, I need to see. I, wait, why do you have intestines? You're like a molten lava rock and you're like, I have intestines. 
Okay, nice to know, but okay. Um, so yeah. That's the only snack. I hope you enjoy Kanye and Jenny. I will talk to you in a bit. I know that so when I start talking, I'm going to stop talking now. See, I kept that promise. Damn it. For his role in saving Earthrealm, Kung Jin's family created a statue in his likeness for inclusion in Raiden's revered collection. But Kung Jin's thoughts were with one no longer accepted by his family, Kung Lao. Kung Jin set out to locate his cousin and found him in the Nether Realm. Raiden believed Kung Lao's tortured soul was forever trapped without Quang Ji's magic to free him. But Kung Jin knew the Shaolin were stronger than any sorcerer's spell. He vowed to help Kung Lao fight off the evil that had remade him. And this is where he ends up betraying him. I'm, I kid, I kid, I kid. But anywho, I'll take the Shadow Kung Jin because that was an awesome skin in the story. Um, it's kind of a thief outfit, but how will we do? Pretty well. <laughs> Anyway, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. Join us tomorrow to take a look at the ball buster herself. Cassie Cage against Johnny Cage. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Till then, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.